All right, guys, we had a lot of requests for titrations to be done, and tonight I've taken the time to satisfy all of your desires. Take the time to satisfy mine. Check out my website, like me on Facebook if you're in Toronto, send me a message. What up? All right, anyways, check it out. Ammonia with hydrochloric acid. What's going to happen when you mix the two? Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Ammonia is a weak base. So this is a strong acid, weak base titration. That's significant in that once we do the reaction, we're going to be left with an equilibrium between the base and its conjugate acid. I'll show you what I mean. When we mix ammonia with hydrochloric acid, what can happen? Well, the ammonia reacts with the hydrochloric acid. What's the conjugate acid of this base, ammonia? The answer is the ammonium ion, NH4+. The H from the HCl attaches here and leaves the Cl behind. Now, one reason I like using NH3 as the weak base is that you can ignore water in this reaction, but I'll show you where it plays a role later. Here's how I like to solve titration problems. Once I have my neutralization, acid plus base equals whatever it makes together, I like to write the number of moles of each right underneath. The number of moles of NH3 is concentration times volume. That's 0.3 moles per liter and point times 0.1 liters is 0 0.03 moles. Check it out. HCl, the number of moles is concentration times volume. That's 0.1 moles per liter and 0.18 liters. 0 0.018 moles. We don't start out with any of this and we don't start out with any of that. So, in purple, the number of moles you start with. But then there's a reaction. The ammonia and the hydrochloric acid react together and they make the NH4 plus and Cl as products. How much reacts away? Well, which of these runs out first? They react in a one to one ratio and I have 0 0.03 of this and 0 0.018 of that. This is less and they're consumed at the same rate. So this runs out first. I'm going to lose all of my 0 0.018 moles of HCl. They react in a one to one ratio, so I'm also going to lose 0 0.018 moles of this. They produce these in one to one ratios, so I gain 0 0.018 moles of this and gain 0 0.018 moles of this. In red is the change. And then finally, how much do I end up with? I started with 0 0.03 moles of this. I lost 0 0.018 and I end up with 0 0.012 moles of ammonia. All of my HCl is gone. I end up with 0 0.018 moles of NH4 and 0 0.018 moles of Cl-. This is always my personal first step for titrations. Figure out how many moles I have in the starting solution, how much reacts away, one of these always disappears, and what I have in the resulting solution. But we're not done yet. The deal with this titration, or any titration, is I want to know what you have left, and I want to know which ones affect the pH of the resulting solution. NH3 is a base, and we have it left over. So it's going to affect the pH. This is its conjugate acid. It that We have some of it left over. It can affect the pH. Cl minus, however, is the conjugate base of an ultra strong acid. An al a strong acid's conjugate is a weak, 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 super weak base. So even though we have Cl minus in solution, it's not going to affect the pH. Put another way, the only way Cl minus could affect the pH is by reacting with water and stealing a proton away from it leaving us with HCl and OH minus. But HCl is a strong acid, so it's just going to cough that H right back up, and that H will react with the OH, and we're right back where, with where we started. Cl minus plays no role in pH. 
what does play a role in pH, NH3, and NH4+. So, we got the numbers of moles that we need. All we need to do is use the Kb to solve for something that can help us find pH. Check it out. NH3 will react with water to make NH4+, and OH-. This is where you use an ice table, now that we're using K, to figure out what the new concentrations of each will be. Now watch out, these are in moles. In order to get concentration in moles per liter, you need to divide by the total volume 280 milliliters. Let's make that abundantly clear. To get the concentration, I have to divide by 0.28 liters. Okay, let me do that here for you. 0 0.012 divided by 0.28. Moles divided by liters, moles per liter. My initial concentration of ammonia, 0 0.04286. Water doesn't matter in equilibrium because it's a liquid. We only include aqueous and gases. The concentration of NH4 plus is 0 0.018 divided by 0.28 and my initial concentration of ammonium is 0 0.06429 initial change oops <laughs> I'm going to lose some of that gain some of this and gain some of that so that my final or equilibrium concentrations are 0 0.04286 minus x, 0 0.06429 plus x, and x. You guys know what I'm doing when I talk about doing an ice table, right? I hope so. Because Kb for this reaction is NH4 plus OH minus all over NH3. In this case, that's 0 0.06429 plus x times x all over 0 0.04286 minus x. And Kb, we were given before, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Huh. Solve for x. I think you'll find x is insignificant. And so all I need to do to solve for x is take 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, multiply it 1.8 to times 10 to the minus 5, multiply it by 0 0.04, oh, I didn't press times, 1.8, oh, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, times 0 0.04286, and divide it by 0 0.06429. I get my x to be 0 0.000, now why don't I just convert it to scientific notation, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5. Beautiful. Oh, you couldn't see when I wrote it. So that x is pretty insignificant relative to these two numbers, so my assumption was okay. But what's important to note is that my OH minus concentration is x. So not only is x equal to that, but OH minus is equal to that. I can get my pOH by taking the negative log of this, which gives 4.92. And I can get my pH by subtracting that from 14. I get 9.08, which makes sense because I had base left over after I used up all my strong acid. I did have conjugate base, sorry, conjugate acid left over here, but overall, the equilibrium did not change. What I was left with was a pH of 9.08. So, my strategy for solving titration problems. Find the number of moles you start with. Find the number of moles you end with. Convert to concentrations. Do an ice table for any of the things you have left over that affect pH. Solve for x, which will either be OH or H+. Plus and then get your pH or pOH from there. Just under 10 minutes, best of luck to you.